Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining me tonight uh, live at the Lesson Studio. I'm going to talk about different pickup selections. So I think um, a lot of times when you start playing guitar, uh, you're not sure why you should use certain pickups in certain situations. I think it's kind of um, something that pros do that maybe you're not sure why you would switch pickups and which pickups work in which situation. So uh, what I was doing there, playing while, over, obviously over While My Guitar Gently Weeps, was moving through different pickups to show you how the same amp tone sounds so different with different pickups. That's with distortion. Of course, if we do it with a clean guitar, we're going to have a, a bunch of variants also. So what I was doing here, um, playing out of the uh, high watt David Gilmore sound again, the high watt amplifier. I think it's a really singing sounding um, amplifier on the Fractal Audio FM9, and I'm using uh, an acoustic sound that I use all the time for live now, so I don't have to bring my acoustic guitar with me. I can play that. So what I want to do here is go, kind of go through the different sounds you get with different pickups. So on the standard Stratocaster, you have five selections. And we'll go over those first, and then we're going to add some more to it. This guitar has 24 different sounds, which is kind of why I had it built for me for live uh, performance. But that's a, a different story. You can check that out. There's a video here. I'll put that up there, um, kind of a video about this guitar. So in the bridge pickup, the humbucker, which means I have both of these together, uh, the humbucker is two uh, pickups that are wired together. I think they're actually wired in opposite polarity, so they kind of hate each other. Uh, for all time <laughs> in battle. But the, the humbucker was created to to buck the hum. Um, the single coil pickup had something built into it called 60 cycle hum. Uh, you can hear a little bit of a buzz, and that was a problem for recording, so they made the humbucker to get rid of that buzz, but the end result was that the pickup itself had a different total characteristic. Humbuckers are fat or wooly or beefy or thick, or you can, you know, brown sound chunky, that sort of thing, whereas a single coil pickup could be considered to be glassy or bright or shimmery or chimey or crisp or something like that. So a different, uh, a different adjective for the different types of pickups. Single coils definitely sound different, and they work for different situations when you're playing live. So right now I'm going to use the humbucker here in the bridge, and that sounds like this. I'm playing out of this sort of like a low gain high watt. Um, Sound. I'll play out of a like a more distorted amp in a minute, but so that's kind of the humbucker. Uh, the second position, well, actually, as a Stratocaster, it would be a single coil. So I can take this little switch here uh, and make this into a single coil. It sounds different. So I'm doing one pickup versus two. Um, when you would use the bridge pickup, you're generally using that to play stuff that's on this side of the guitar neck, right? So if you're going to play something that's it sounds more like that kind of sound. You're more likely going to sound better if you use a bridge pickup. And it's made for that down the neck. Now, not to say you can't play the bridge pickup up here, but you're going to find out in a minute here that maybe the, the neck pickup might be better for that. The second position on the Stratocaster on this five-way blade switch sounds like this. So that's two pickups together, that's these two single coils. The middle one, 
sounds like this. I'm playing the Phrygian mode at the moment. Uh, the fourth position, or these two together, distorted, sounds like this. And then the fifth one position as a single coil sounds like this. So that's going to sound better up here, maybe, than this does. It's different for sure. If I switch this switch here, I can make this into a humbucker up here. And that's going to sound uh, really good for the, for the top of the guitar. So basically, as you use this five-way blade switch for a Stratocaster, as you move your way towards the middle of the guitar, you want to put on your neck pickup. And as you move towards the outside of the guitar, you put your bridge pickup on, sort of like, like that. In fact, actually on the J.D. Strum record, on a song called On and On, if you listen to the solo I did, I actually hit that switch in the middle of the solo a couple of times, like up here. I noticed that, uh, I think I picked that up from Steve Morse. Uh, Steve Morse is one of my favorite guitar players, and he, he always switches pickups all the time, like elaborate pickup selection switching and also tone knob switching too in the middle of playing his his thing and he's really good at it so i kind of had this guitar design with that in mind where i'd have a bunch of different sounds there's 24 sounds in here which is great because you can just kind of make those different tonal characteristics happen while you're playing live and i couple that with the uh, axe effects the fractal axe effects so i now switch through amps the way i used to switch through pedals so instead of switching distortion pedals, I'll literally switch amps. So one song will be a Beatles song. I'll be playing out of a Vox amp. Next song will be like a, I don't know, an 80s kind of power ballad. I'll play out of a Marshall sounding amp. Next song will be like a, a disco song. I'll play out of a Fender Bassman. And I can change uh, amps like pickups. Or like pedals, I'm sorry. But the pickups are really important to switch. So it doesn't matter which guitar you're playing. Your guitar can do these same things. The standard Gibson guitar has three sounds. There's uh, the humbucker here the neck pickup here and the two together which is kind of um kind of the santana sound two together this is this humbucker and this humbucker would sound like this now i could switch uh amplifiers too to really accentuate that and put on like a mesa boogie amp or a, a dumble to get even a better well, there's another difference in the sound here's the bridge pickup here's the neck pickup Here's the Santana sound. And that one's kind of nasally to me. So if I play this uh, solo on this, while well, I can turn to at least backing track, I'll switch through some of those sounds. Down here, I'll start with the bridge. If I'm gonna go down lower, maybe I'll put a single coil sound on. On here for more like a Spanish -y kind of sound. I could play this, uh, I could approach this song with a pentatonic scale too, I don't know, I'm just feeling kind of Phrygian like now. Second position. That's your second position of the Strat. Much softer. Middle pickup, I think this one sounds like the, the 50s to me. Very Buddy Holly sounding. When I get to the clean sound here, maybe you'll hear it. This one. Neck pickup. Kind of better for that up here than these the two together. If I'm playing down here, I might switch to this. Climbing up the neck, maybe I'll switch to this. In between sound, I'll switch to this. This, this. Same phrase, it's not different each time. So as you can see, when I get to the higher position, I'm going up here to the neck pickup. Single coil is going to sound different than the humbucker. Here's the single coil. Here's the humbucker. On this guitar, I can also switch to a 4 dB boost for the humbuckers. Kind of loses some definition. 
really gives the humbucker. A little more honk to it. Okay, so now let's get out of the distorted world and into the clean sound and see if you can really hear how this works. So this is a Fender Vibralux sound. We'll go back to our bridge pickup again. All right, so here we go. That's the bridge pickup. Now if I switch to the second position, this is like in the Stratocaster, this would be the second position. So that's your um, tone down there. The middle position sounds like, kind of sounds like Next position is your standard um, that's the Jimmy sound. That might be my favorite sound on a guitar, possibly. love that sound. And then the neck pickup, very much that sound. It's more uh, round, right? Humbucker, though, is going to sound better for the jazzy stuff. So if you can get a guitar that has at least hum sing hum, humbucker single hum, right? you can get those five sounds and if you can split them, this has two switches to split even better because now I can get the five sounds plus some splitting. I can push pull uh, another knob and now I have a total of like these 24 sounds. Another cool sound you can get if you use all three pickups together, that's kind of the Andy Summer sound. Or like natural science and rush. So that'd be like you're like a That kind of sound. So, um, I would probably favor the fourth position of the strat the best. Um, and then, so if you're going to play like a country thing, use the bridge pickup as a single coil. It's a completely different sound. completely different tone. Switch one position to the second position of the Strat. Leave this good blues sound. Middle position. You got the 60s kind of built in. Neck position as a single coil. You got your Hendrixy sound. Humbucker, your jazz tone. Two pickups together, kind of more like the Santana sound. If you can make it happen, the two outside together, it kind of sounds like an acoustic guitar to me. I like that a lot. Three single coils together. And then you've got like this kind of really neat kind of police-y kind of sound. So what I do when I'm playing a lot is I'll just kind of switch through these different sounds. If you go with a distortion thing, if I'm doing like a Van Halen kind of sound, I'm going to want to use the bridge pickup. I 
do that with this, it's going to sound a little wonky. Now it has its moment, right? But if I'm playing. Got the bridge pickup on. But if I'm up here going. I've got the neck pickup on. If I do that with the bridge. Sounds a little suspect, doesn't it? So I'm definitely going to use the neck pickup up here. Bridge down here. Up here for the neck. And I kind of definitely switched through the same thing with the Vox kind of sound here. That's the bridge. Here we have the neck. Different animal. But if I'm going to play this, I'm kind of digging the neck pickup for that. So I, I'm always looking for the best way to maximize the tonal characteristic that I'm going for any given moment when I'm playing. So it depends on if I'm being textural or if I'm being more like um, a covertly melodic, right? So melodic might work better with a humbucker. Textural might work better with single coil. So keep this in mind too when you're recording and you want to make different parts. Let's say I was writing a song that had this a add nine in it. I'm just making stuff up here. Let's say I just like C minor seven to this F sharp minor eleven. That was there was my chords. If I'm gonna record my rhythm part, I might want to use like the second position of a strat. going to work so well. Maybe the humbucker doesn't work for that. So I'm always thinking as a like an, a painter with textures. Is that texture going to work for me? I don't think that texture is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go with a single coil because it's softer. <clears throat> now do I want a single coil that's more round like up here? I've got the fourth position of the strat on. Now that's more like I'm looking for that. Okay, that's cool. But maybe I'm down here and I want to play this instead. You're going to learn these different um, applications uh, by, by trial and error. And you, it's not always an exact hard rule either. You can break the rules. You can use a humbucker down here the, in the neck position. Uh, you can do it, right? But just this, like, that sweet spot that happens. Back to like this Marshall cell. I'm play this. I've got the bridge pickup on. If I do that with a neck pickup, it's a completely different animal. So again, if I'm playing, if I do that with a single coil, it's going to be out. It's not really working for me either. Let's talk about choices of guitars to buy. So if you're a brand new guitar player, if you buy a Stratocaster that has three single coils, you're kind of out of luck when it comes to the humbuckers, right? You're not going to get that sound. I would recommend if you can do it, something with a humbucker single and a humbucker is a great way to go. Uh, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. Or if you buy a guitar that just has two humbuckers, get something that you can split the humbuckers. Because later on, if you're in a situation in a band and you want to play something textural, like I was saying, uh, you're going to want to use single coils for that. What does that say? How about the feel of, about... How do you feel about P90s? I wish I had a guitar with P90s. I don't have that sound. Um, so in my world, let's talk about the world of uh, different textures and tones. I don't have a Rickenbacker sound and I don't have a Gretsch sound in my world. To me, the four food groups of guitar tone, as far as guitars go, um, Telecaster, Stratocaster, Les Paul, 335.
right? So um, when I record music, I put, uh, I, I, for the distorted tracks, I double the guitar tracks. I have um, usually like the other Anderson that's brown will be one rhythm guitar track and then the PRS or the 335, the other rhythm guitar track. And I put those together for like a big, like a, if you don't want to use the same track and then and put it on different sides. It's called big mono. It sounds really bad. You actually want your recorded tracks to be slightly off from each other. It gives it more of a natural feel. I had read that Tom Schultz from Boston would record um, his parts like seven or eight different layers, right? But with the strobe tuner, they were so close together that they were within one set of each other. But it would give that giant sound. That's this huge wall of sound because he had all these guitars like stacked on top of each other. So when I made Volt Horizon, I did that. I took one guitar and another guitar, and if you listen to it, you'll hear there's two different tracks happening, and they're different tones. I use different amps and different pedals and different tones, but they're the exact same part, so they're really almost not discernible, but they are. And then I did something pretty, I, I read about from Joe Satriani. This guitar has the buzz fight and tuning system. There's a little tuning fork in the back here. So it's, it's, got, it's tempered. It's slightly out of tune with a regular guitar. Um, it has to do with uh, the way that like, a, a piano is tempered to make all the notes even, but a standard guitar is not. So like the Paul Reed Smith guitar I play is not, or the Gibson guitars, I have two Gibson guitars. So the, this guitar or, or the Brown Anderson guitar that has the Buzz Fightin' system is slightly out of tune with that other, uh, other Gibson guitar, which makes a really cool wall of sound when you go to record. As far as the textural stuff goes, I use the Stratocaster tones, which is the second or the fourth position on the Strat blade switch, and I usually double that with a Telecaster, or I'll play something that's opposing that. So Bold Horizon, this first riff. I'm playing that on, a, on a, a Marshall at the moment. But that first sound, that's played with a Strat sound. This is it, this one, the fourth position. But then the background guitar on that was played with a Telecaster. I think those two live in a really great spot. The Telecaster is a little bit of an, uh, an anomaly because it actually sounds more like a Les Paul than a Fender guitar. Um, Jimmy Page used the Telecaster for the first, I think, four records. And then apparently Joe Walsh gave him the first Les Paul that he used and he made them a billion dollars, I'm sure. Um, so that's kind of the way I record. The 335 or the, or the, or the um, PRS guitar, that's the, the lead guitar sound. That's the humbucker. That's the sound that, that sings and soars, right? Now, not to say you can't soar with a single coil, but I really like the single coil for textural stuff. Now, kind of that like, you know, really kind of pretty sounding uh, sort of softer sounding stuff. So I wouldn't do that with the, with this bridge pickup. I used to love the like the Van Halen Beretta guitar. Right, like, there's like a uh, Kramer had one pickup. He always routed everything out and had one pickup. And I mean, I'm not going to ever. Eddie Van Halen's the best, but like, I couldn't live with one pickup. I'm I'm already like ready to try something different. I love to mess around with sounds. So I do not have a P90 sound and I do not have a, a Gretsch sound. I can do a lot of things with, with technology, like this track I was playing at the beginning was a, an acoustic simulation. I could do a 12 string sound, you know, like a, kind of like a, like again, if I use the pickups to my advantage, I'm using the two outside pickups because it sounds more like an acoustic guitar. I got that from Steve Morris. So if I play, your 12 string sound. So you can do a lot with technology, um, which is great, but pickups themselves are also kind of the go-to thing to learn how to control because that's really where all your sound lies. Which pickups are you going to use and which guitar are you going to choose to use? And then amplifiers might be probably secondary and then maybe third would be the pedals and the effects, learning how to use utilize things like the chorus and the flanger and the phaser and delays are important and reverb and all those other um, textural things that you have to, to give you a wash of a sound. Like I never play a dry guitar. Hear that uh, delay? Repeat, let's listen to it. I'll do this one instead. So it's a, it's a multi-delay and a regular delay. The regular delay is going ta, ta. Multi -late delay is going T, tippy, tippy, T, boom, ducka, ducka, da. But it's going across the spectrum, so it's going like, doom, ducka, ducka, da. You can hear it. 
So why do I do that? Because if I'm playing this, it's there, but you can't hear it until I stop. Now, I'm not being overtly delay-ish because that's kind of like you know, built into that particular guitar piece. But if you use just the right splash of delay like that, when you're playing it makes it sound beautiful, but you don't really know it's on until you stop playing. And I like the multi-delay because it gives a stereo spectrum, so it really sounds great when you play live. It fills the room when you have used a multi-delay. And that's on all the time. All that's always on. I mean, I, I'm not as wet <laughs> as like uh, the Steve Lukather sound from the 1980s or like even Eric Johnson's maybe a little bit, you know, a little wetter than what I'm doing. You'll find the right blend for how much of that you want. When it comes to playing lead guitar, the same thing exists. So it's there, but you're not going to hear it. The trail is definitely there. So I, I like that to be an omnipresent thing. And the same with reverb too. Reverb, just enough reverb so it's not dry, but you don't want to, like, I, I kind of look at it like salad. Like if you have a little salad dressing, on your salad, it's going to taste better. But if you make your salad into a soup that is salad dressing with a leaf floating on it, it's no longer a salad. Now it becomes dressing. So too much effects just kills everything. But no effects, I don't think sounds good either. So if, even if this Marshall sound, if I go back to like the Van Halen sound, with pickups, I'm using the bridge pickup, right? I'm doing that. still there. So that's uh, it's always on. <laughs> it's cool just a trail of delay. So uh, as far as the pickups go, we'll go over this again. What I'm doing is talking about how there's uh, different pickups that work for different parts of your guitar. The general idea is the bridge pickup works better for here and the bass pickup works better for here because the guitar is made that way, right? If you pick down here, it's more trebly sounding. If I pick up here, it's more bassy sounding. So if you go back to like an old time sort of uh, surf sound, you know, that kind of sound. I'm playing here with the bridge pickup. Can I accent that sound? Like a, like a sitar sound. Uh, sort of like your, like, um, I don't know, the Beatles, the sitar kind of, the fake sitar sound. I was doing that. I'm like, right there. Immediately fatter from the same exact guitar, same exact settings on the amp, I can do this. It's a different world, isn't it? From this to this. Just like that. So when you're strumming, the same thing applies too. You could do, if you're doing like, No, it's different than here. You have to take all these things into consideration the whole time you're playing. It's funny, when I'm learning Randy Rhodes stuff, the guy was really little, right? Like he was a lot smaller than I am. I'm 6'4". He was, I don't know, 5 something. 5'5 five, five or 5'4". Five, so I take my hand and I shrink it so I can pick here because it sounds different than my big ass hand, which is over here. 
Now, you get the his sound, I, I kind of make my hand smaller, which is interesting. So what you do is you want to use your pickups to follow the general natural uh, way that the guitar works. The guitar sounds trebly here, it sounds bassy here, it sounds trebly here, it sounds bassy here. The bass meets in the middle, like this. So your pickups can kind of follow along. You play the bridge down here. Single coil sound is very thin, that's good for your country stuff. If you're going... I'm playing wagon wheel. I'm on, the, I'm on the, the bridge pickup and I'm using the uh, single coil sound, right? If I'm playing that refugee from Tom Petty or something. However, if I want to use a humbucker down here, that's okay too. You know, if I'm playing like... That's one of the coolest chords ever. That chord. This is uh, Steve and I were, Steve takes lessons with me. We were uh, talking about this chord. The bridge pickup for that. However, if I go to the second position, now I've got this kind of like a second position of a strat. It's got your um, thinner sounding stuff. So anything that's textural down here, if I'm playing like Angel or something. that sound. If I want the uh, La Bumba sound, I'm going to use this this middle pickup. And that's like the 50s in a box. It's so when I play all, a lot of weddings all the time, I'm always thinking of which texture is going to be best for the song. This is the first thing you think about before you think about changing pedals. And in my case, with the fractal uh, gear, changing amps with every song or even every part of every song, you can change it to a different amp and use your amps like pedals, which is weird. Next position is the second or the fourth position of a Strat. That's the best sound on the guitar, I think. That's your, that's your Hendrixy sound. Like if I go like... That sound right there is beautiful. Now, the neck pickup is best for your uh, kind of Hendrixy Stratty stuff too. Different sound though than your than your uh, two pickups together. This is this sound versus. Then we can go with two uh, humbuckers together to get the Santana kind of sound. And then if you go with two singles on the outside, it sounds like an acoustic. And then if you go with three singles, you get the Andy Summers kind of message in the bottom sound. It's, it's that his, his tone is that definitely the three single coils together and then you can also get hotter pickups right so these this guitar is wired to have um, a 4 dB boost and I can make everything hotter so it sounds the same but now it has this kind of more honk to it now I actually like pickups that aren't very hot if you go if you go to the distorted side of things uh, we want to use the bridge pickup <laughs> all your Van Halen sound and stuff. Because the neck pickup is going to sound a little weird for that. So all the Van Halen catalog. Use your neck pickup, you know. I've got the, this kind of dialed in. I was listening to Van Halen 1 
uh, trying to get his exact guitar tone. <laughs> yeah, it's just tough to do. I got a comment here. Who's that? Enjoy your lives. Nice to see you. Hey, nice to see a TA player too. Thank you. I love this guitar. I do. Um, I, it's, I shouldn't even say this on, for the whole world to hear, but I talk to my wife all the time, like, which guitar I'm going to be buried with? <laughs> and uh, so this is the one, right? I, I, nobody's going to probably, I mean, I, I'm not like an Egyptian or something, and I don't think it's going to you know, live forever with me. We'll jam with the pharaohs or something, but this is the guitar that, like, I, I love this thing. And it's funny, it's got lots of scratches and dings in the back of the neck. I've had it for six years and almost seven years. Like, it was kind of born just before my son was born, actually. Uh, and there's like dings back here and I need to get it fixed, but I just can't let it go for a couple of weeks for them to kind of fix that. So I'm just dealing with all that ugh, stuff back here. I have replaced the potentiometer already because I like to do all the volume small stuff. It's important to get a guitar so you can reach those notes. I absolutely love that. I, I couldn't have a guitar that didn't have that, you know, volume swell ability. If you use a Gibson guitar, you have to use the, the volume pedal. And I've got two Gibson guitars. There's the 335. And then um, if you look at the videos on the channel, you'll see there's uh, also, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell a story about the Explorer. That's a that's a, another giant story I need to tell. But you can't do a volume swell with those. So you have to use your feet. And I've got that capability, but I just love this. You know, who doesn't like to do that? I think that's in D. So you can do like your cello. On the Bold Horizon record, I did a little uh, on a song called Distant Worlds. I did a... Um, a, 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 a kind of a fabricated four-part violin sort of thing. There's like two violins going on and uh, and like a, something that sounds like a... See, I almost bought a drop-top HH a few months ago. Huff, not the right time, financial-wise. It's never the right time to buy a guitar. Ever, ever, ever the right time to buy a guitar. It's funny. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm out, of, I'm out of the guitar buying business too. To get this one, I had to sell... I had a, I've had this my fourth Anderson, I think. I had an Anderson um, Telecaster Hollow, the draw, the Hollow T, and on Bold Horizon, that was the second guitar I used. The, if you go to the video channel, like when you get all the live stream, just go over to the channel and look at the guitars behind me on the regular videos. The yellow Telecaster I built. Uh, I went to a guitar uh, building class and learned how to build guitars. So that's a Warmoth guitar. I need to do a video on that. It's pretty neat. So I did sell my Anderson Telecaster to get this guitar. I sold it to my friend Kevin, if you're watching Kevin, hi. Um, in order to, to afford this, I, I'm always kind of selling stuff. We all are, right? You sell something to get something else. So um, what's interesting is this guitar is the exact same weight as the other Anderson guitar that I have that's on the cover of that record. It's seven pounds, two ounces, exactly. This is mahogany with a with a maple neck, which is kind of the big faux pas, no, big no-no in guitar world. Um, you're not supposed to do that. However, I did talk to Roy from Tom Anderson, and he said that he believes that Gibson used mahogany because it was cheap and available, and Fender used um, maple because it was cheap and available. It's interesting. And alder and, sw and swamp ash because it was cheap and available. And when you mix and match those, it's supposed to be like a big thing you're not supposed to do. But uh, I think the Phil Collin guitar from Def Leppard, he has a combination of like a, a maple neck with a hump with a mahogany body. Sounds really good. The, the um, Paul Reed Smith CE series is the same thing. I really like it because it's got like a punch to it. And it's still got that same, you know, punch you could do. You can get away with that, right? And then the next second later, you can do like a... And it's not just a single coil sound. You're not just getting a single coil sound to get away with... You know, to be able to get away with having a single coil sound, but you're literally able to play all the the strat sounding stuff that is like you know the earmark 
the single coils. It sounds legit. It's amazing. So that, that's a great combination of wood. I know you're supposed to do that, but I, I swear by it. So for a live guitar to be able to pull off the Strat sound and also the Les Paul sound, but recording wise, the 335 is just fat enough for me to, to give enough of a jazz kind of sound. So all the stuff that's recorded that has a jazz kind of sound like a... That tune, um, Daydreams. I used the uh, 335 for that. Right there, isn't it? Uh, if, did you build with Warmoth? If you built guitars with Warmoth, I, I I swear by them. It's it's a great way to go. And what happens is they can design the neck for you. So that Telecaster I have has a compound radius. It has stainless steel frets. And it also has something called the Irvana nut, which is a special nut that they... Uh, it's supposed to keep your first fret from going sharp, right? So that's one of the battles we have as guitar players. This guitar is the Buzz Fighting System, so intonation is, is pretty keen with this. It's the idea is you're supposed to be able to play all your C you know, sounds off the guitar neck and stays in tune wherever you are. I don't know how far you go, it's still... There it is, <laughs> in tune, right? However, um, it's, it's not exactly perfect, right? But the Irvana thing, is crazy, 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 crazy. You play an E chord, you know, that like, you know, that Lola note that drives you crazy. I love about you, but that note always drives me nuts. I can hear it's out of tune, right? I can tell. That's that Sting song, it's beautiful. I can always tell that that note's out of tune. So actually, when I record these E form bar chords, I always skip the A string. Like, I think Hendrix did this because the A string was out of tune. I know, bear with me, I know that a whole little wing thing is all that kind of thing with the thumb, but here's why. If you look at this chord, this is out of tune. So if I do this, better, but if I skip it, intonation is perfect, right? When I did that, instead of going like this, which is how I originally wrote that, moving through the cage system, instead I did this. Because I could control these little West Montgomery, I think they're called shell voicings, right? Yes, yeah, shell, and this is the shell up here. I do like... That kind of thing. So, I can control the intonation better with these little guys than I can with this. So I never play that. Like, I never do. If I'm playing a live gig and I'm playing... I'm much more likely to do this. I know that's supposed to be a faux pas, but I'm likely to do this, because then this finger kicks this way a little bit. Your third finger gets in tune. And I know it's probably even, not even, it's probably like a, a, a really minuscule difference, but if you can hear it, then it's real, right? It doesn't matter if it's even measurable. If you can hear it and it bothers you, you know, then it's a real thing. But intonation is a big deal, so... I always try to have good intonation when I'm playing, and I'm not perfect, uh, which is uh, very apparent from this video. But I'm um, always trying to reach for that, you know, in tune note. And so I would skip the A string if possible. So with your pickups, um, the idea is to be able to just change your textures all the time when you're playing. Be aware of what you're doing. Be aware of the genre that you're representing. The the style or the player or even the the decade the era whatever word you want to put in there and then just kind of be aware of what is that what are they doing like not just what guitar are they playing because we you know, there's only so much control you have over guitars unless you're joe bonamassa and you have some dude named tim in the back who's just whipping guitars at you i tried that with one gig i played um 
I was doing this big blues festival, and I brought four guitars with me because I thought it'd be like you know cool and have four guitars with me. And I and I switch guitars between songs, and oh my god, it was like really impossible. Even if I have four straps ready to go and four wireless systems, it's still really hard unless somebody's whipping that guitar at you. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do the the Brian May thing or the Steve Morse thing even better because Steve Morse is like the best at this. And I built this guitar. Uh, I don't have a name for it. Like it's not Frankenstein. I don't know what to call it. Um, but I, I built this blue guitar, my song called the Blue Guitar, with 24 sounds so when I'm playing live I can get all those different textures out of it and not have to switch guitars in the middle of a song. You know, it's not, it's not like um, comprehensive when it comes to recording. I would not record a record with just this guitar. I, I wouldn't do it. I would use the different food groups I was talking about. For me, which is the Les Paul, the 335, the Strat, and the Telecaster. And in all my cases, uh, well, the, the, the Anderson guitars are the, are the Fender sounds. Like, I think that Anderson is a uh, you know, Fender on hyper steroids, like way beyond what Fender's ever done. No offense to Fender owners out there. And if you have a Fender guitar, you know, I'm sure it's great. If you ever got your hands on one of these things, it would change your life. It's it's like nothing else. The guitar neck is the most comfortable thing you've ever experienced. I think that's weird. Like when kids come for lessons, they have guitars that are impossible to play, right? And and they're learning to play on something that I wouldn't even play for five minutes. Like I wouldn't even take that guitar in my hands for five minutes because I'd probably be injured and have to go see a therapist or something but yet as pros you know we've got these uh these tools that are so much easier to play and it seems almost backwards that kids should have the easy guitars and we should be fighting for our sounds but that's not the way it works so again um, i'm going to switch through some down sounds here here's the bridge pickup Playing something down here, something country like. Bridge pickup all the way. I'm totally going to use that in a live setting. If I'm going to be in something that's more textural, but I want it to be more trebly textural, second position of a strat for that sound, if I'm playing. Uh, Got that going on. The middle pickup is interesting. The middle pickup is like, sounds very uh, 50s to me. I, I think it's kind of like it got that 50s sound. And if I play the fourth position of a Strat, there's your Jimi Hendrix sound. And that's the, that's the one I've been like noodling with for the last 10 minutes. Like, I love that sound. I could just kind of play that. I'll play that sound for a minute. So just go like a. Love that sound, and then the neck pickup by itself. When they kind of do that, that kind of sound. Got that going on. The neck pickup as a humbucker is your jazz sound. If you're gonna play like a. I'm still using the same amp. If I switch to a matchless amp, it's even better for jazz. If I play like Autumn Leaves with that. Pushing through the different pickups, you can see how I'm utilizing these to get whatever texture I want. If I want something,
completely changed sounds using the same amp through all of that. It's so fun. I, I totally recommend learning how to do that. I think it will change your guitar life uh, for, for a long time. So I'm going to play uh, with the thing I started off with is kind of using these different pickups through while my guitar gently weeps. Using the uh, high watt D30 amp, I think it's D DR30, DC30. Money, push down here. Well, I was going to say something. Huh. Yeah, people swear by Music Man guitars. I, I know, and um, it probably sounds really, really great. Uh, I think that the Stratocaster, the, the Fender. Um, the Fender feel that's built into Tom Anderson seems to work for me. I guess that's what it is. Yes, the guitars do pick you. It's funny because uh, I had a I had a Sur SUHR guitar before this one. It was actually serial number 911. And I lived and breathed that guitar for a long time. And then I found Tom Anderson and I was like, I just jumped ship, which is like... Uh, not to say that Sir's not great, like a lot of great players play them and they work for people. And I just like Tom Anderson. And I like Gibson a lot too. I've had 22 guitars or something. Um, some good Fenders too, but I, I really kind of like the boutique world a lot. Switching pickups here, just kind of randomly. Done that riff unless I was on the bridge pickup. Snarl. Right? Now, to make that Santana like, I'll put two humbuckers on together, play the same kind of riff, and suddenly it's completely different sound. Now you've got your like. Bridge pickup down here, or actually single coil down here, it's going to give more like a honky sound. It's kind of be good if you want like a like a maybe a more. That kind of tone going on instead. Now, the harmonics definitely work better with the bridge pickup. Something else to consider, too. Any kind of harmonic play you're going to do, definitely want to use a bridge pickup. This doesn't work with this pickup. It's already gone. So, definitely is a pretty good for that. All right, well, thanks so much for hanging out. I really appreciate uh, your, your time spent today. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel, watch videos. Um, I like to do these live stream uh, videos, uh, sessions as much as I can. I teach guitar lessons uh, Monday through Thursday, and after lessons, I can pop on here. I'm already here. I'm already teaching. It's a different studio than my house, as you can see. Uh, the other studio is... Thompson stayed small. I think he only has 13, 14 people working. You know what? It, it's the same people that have been working there forever, too, which is great about the, the whole company. You can talk to Tom Anderson uh, in person. I had some great conversations with Tom. 
A couple Tom Anderson uh, conversations quickly here. It says, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. With, with Tom Anderson, um, one day I was talking to him about about uh, Eric Clapton and about the woman tone. Because, like, you know, I thought I was talking about. He's like, no, that's not what the woman tone is. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, the woman tone is whenever you take your bridge pickup and you roll off the tone completely. And that's how Eric Clapton got his sound. And I was like, really? So if you listen to it, if I go, right, that's too loud though. Right, sorry, clipping. Right, if I roll back the tone knob, there's the woman tone. It's like, that's how he got it. That was interesting. I didn't know that, right? And then one day I was talking to Tom and I was like, man, I'm like, I don't want to, if I really want to take this guitar out. Because Tom gives me like the switches and the knobs and stuff if they break. Uh, this little five-way selector uh, from playing gigs, like I always flick it off and it goes into the audience, right? So it's gone. You can't just go get it. And it only fits this guitar, the little switch on this guitar. So I keep flicking that off into the audience. And so I think I finally glued this one on, but they just sends them out to me from California. And I think you gave me a, a volume pot, which was nice. Uh, I guess I really appreciate any help you can get as a guitar player, you know, every little bit counts. Um, so I was talking about not beating the guitars up and not playing these on stage. And he was disappointed. He's, I was like, uh, I don't want to really play this on stage. And he said, he said that um, people tend not to because they want to kind of baby them and take care of them and he wishes they would just take them out and play gigs with them and use the guitars for what they're intended for and i said yeah but it's an anderson and then i laughed i'm like but you're an anderson um it's funny so yeah it's a great company and if you can afford to get a tom anderson you could just get one guitar and then that's it for a lifetime you don't have to get another guitar you could just play that one guitar Forever, like I said, it could be the guitar that you roll up in the hearse with, you know. You have your big coffin, right? And then you got your little guitar case coffin. It already comes in a coffin. Think about it, right? That's the guitar you bring with you to go jam with the Pharaohs is your Anderson guitar for sure. Hopefully the uh, Pharaohs like blue. I'm not sure if they do. I think that the, like that flood that came through the Red Sea may not uh, really kind of bode well with them when it comes to the color blue. But... Um, anyways, thanks so much for hanging out and I'll catch you uh, next time I'm on here. Thank you.